Welcome everyone. Today, we are focusing on the Asian financial crisis of 1997 to 1998. This was one of the most significant financial crises of the late 20th century, reshaping the way economists and policymakers think about currency regimes, globalization, and financial contagion. We will cover the timeline, the parties involved, what happened, why it happened, how it unfolded, how it ended, and which countries were affected. Let's dive in. In early 1997, warning signs appeared in Thailand. A real estate bubble was collapsing and the bot was under intense pressure due to its fixed exchange rate system. Investors started doubting the sustainability of Thailand's financial system. On July 2, 1997, Thailand devalued the bot and abandoned its dollar peg. This triggered panic in the markets and is widely considered the official start of the Asian financial crisis. After Thailand, contagion spread quickly. Currencies and stock markets in Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines fell sharply. By late 1997, South Korea was in crisis, requiring IMF intervention. In 1998, recessions swept across Asia. Indonesia's rupiah collapsed sparking political turmoil and leading to President Suharto's resignation in May 1998. South Korea implemented painful reforms under IMF guidance. By the end of 1998, the crisis had left deep scars. The crisis involved national governments such as Thailand, Indonesia, South Korea, Malaysia, and the Philippines. International institutions like the IMF, World Bank, and Asian Development Bank played critical roles. Private investors, hedge funds, and banks contributed to the capital flows and speculative attacks. Several parties were involved in the crisis. Domestically, corporations, banks, and citizens were directly affected through job losses, bankruptcies, and inflation. Political leaders like Thai Prime Minister, Indonesian President, and South Korean President were at the center of the drama. The crisis began with the collapse of Thailand's bot and spread as investors lost confidence in neighboring economies. Exchange rates depreciated massively, stock markets plunged, and banking systems faltered. Many countries had to request IMF bailouts. These bailouts came with strict austerity and reform conditions that were politically unpopular but deemed necessary for stabilization. Several underlying vulnerabilities set the stage. Many countries had borrowed excessively in U.S. dollars, leaving them exposed to currency swings. Fixed exchange rate systems encouraged risk-taking but created fragility. Weak financial systems and poor oversight allowed excessive lending. Speculative attacks targeted currencies seen as overvalued. Finally, contagion dynamics spread fear across borders. Mechanically, once Thailand let go of its dollar peg, investor panic spread. Currencies like the Indonesian rupiah and the Korean won collapsed, losing over 80% and 50% of their value respectively. Stock markets plunged, unemployment surged, and corporate bankruptcies piled up. IMF packages, exceeding $100 billion in total, attempted to stabilize economies by enforcing austerity, raising interest rates, and restructuring banks. By 1999, stabilization was underway. IMF support, currency depreciation boosting exports, and structural reforms helped countries recover. South Korea bounced back relatively quickly, while Indonesia's recovery was delayed due to political and social turmoil. Across Asia, the crisis left long-term lessons about reserve accumulation and financial regulation. The most severely affected countries were Thailand, Indonesia, South Korea, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan were moderately affected. Japan and China were less directly impacted, but still felt the ripple effects. Globally, markets were shaken and investor attitudes toward emerging markets changed for years to come. 
The Asian financial crisis of 1997 to 1998 was a turning point in modern financial history. It revealed the dangers of excessive foreign borrowing, weak financial regulation, and rigid exchange rate systems. It reshaped how Asian economies manage reserves and approach global capital flows. For finance professionals, it remains a crucial case study in international financial management. This concludes our discussion about the Asian financial crisis of 1997 to 1998. See you at the next lecture.